Like, what? Oh my god. Man. Leon, why didn't you do a flip? Leon, why didn't you do a flip? Oh, it's still here! Yeah, well, that's like the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. This is gonna break. I'm gonna fall down. I'm gonna have to fight somebody. I know it. Oh. Oh. Oh, good. Damn it! Hello, everybody. My name is Bricky. Do you like war? Do you enjoy the clouds above and the funny things they spit out often? One might even call it thunder? Then you might like one of the most comprehensive vehicle combat games ever made, War Thunder, the sponsor of today's video. War Thunder is a fantastic, highly detailed and immersive war game that has over 2,000 thousand planes, helicopters, tanks, and boats across a variety of time frames. Its combined arm, very dynamic battles, boasts a ton of interesting customization, as well as highly detailed and immersive gameplay that you can do in all sorts of manners. And you can play it on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and the older generation consoles. Which is great because the entirety of War Thunder spans over a hundred years of development all the way back the 1920s and it has unparalleled customization with all of those different kinds of vehicles including hundreds of camos, 3D modeling, historical signifiers and so on. Personally I've always thought the landscapes were really really cool because the different kinds of perspectives you have whether it's on a plane or you know going down in a tank there's so many different kinds of fidelity and making it look good from so many various avenues of piloting different kinds of vehicles kind of adds a good bit of immersion to it. It. You know, what you need in a plane versus what you need in a ship and what you need in a tank is all very different, and yet it seems so seamless. And you can download War Thunder right now by going down, checking the link in the description, and giving it a shot on, like I said, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, including the older gen consoles. Though, if you register on PC, you do get a large free bonus pack as well, which includes a premium account, multiple vehicles, boosters, and more. So go ahead, check out the link in the description, download War Thunder, play it yourself right now, and thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently making a fool of myself trying to escape the insane chainsaw man. Resident, Resident Evil, Evil 4. They don't do that in the game. I don't know why. Clearly these residents are evil. Capcom has seemed to have found their newest golden goose. Sure, we can make more Resident Evil games, and we will, but we can just also at the same time remaster the old ones one after the other and they'll sell like treasure maps from a creepy merchant. And sell it has. I was planning to discuss this game regardless of if it did well since I had playthroughs of the second and third games remake. The second one I consider to be the best remake of all time and the third leaving me a bit wanting. First time I've ever seen a dodge button make a game worse. But Resident Evil 4, like, it's the one, isn't it? It's the one that everyone has extremely fond memories of. Back releasing in 2005, it was that era where, where games were really getting better and better and didn't quite hit that gray military simulator era. The things RE4 did for games is a list and a video in itself, not just for the series it was in, but for action horror as a genre. Like it or not, you cannot deny its impact. So, big weight on its shoulders, yeah? Sure, RE2 was a knockout, but the best thing about RE3 was giving us a modern Jill Valentine model. You know, hit, miss, what are we gonna get? You know, mainstream games tend to stay in that very positive region on Steam. When you get really big, someone's going to try to bring you down. Detract from your strengths, be a contrarian, something like that. So, seeing this was a strong invitation. is, I remembered playing RE4. I swore I did. I remembered Ashley, the, the, the little dude, the village, the chainsaw guy, and in particular, Ada awakened something in me as a child. But my memory felt like a dream, fading in and out of understanding as I played it. Like when I started the game, I was waiting for the could sing Kumbaya together at some Boy Scout bonfire. Didn't get that line, and wondering how much of my memory could actually be trusted. Turns out, the dialogue had been adjusted, so not everything was identical, but, you know, even so. Starting the game, I was floored. 
with the amount of work the RE engine is putting out. Granted, I've been floored ever since those damn burger physics in RE2, but it just continued to impress. The details, textures, and in particular, hair physics have so much in them, which makes it all that much funnier when you're playing as Leon. I'll let myself out. <sighs> Oh, Leon. Those will be the words you'll be uttering the entirety of the game. Now, I know that most, if not all, voice actors are different in this remake. As far as remakes go, normally they either put a gloss of paint over the original, or they bring it up to a texture quality level, or they just completely rebuild it from the ground up. This is ground up, but I have never seen someone pull off Leon this strongly before. He's able to capture the absolutely dorky attitude this man has and the both quaint yet terrible one-liners as if he was the original VA. Where's everyone going? Bingo? But outside of Leon's one-liners, the thing I noticed the most when playing was just how smooth the overall gameplay is. Like Resident Evil 4 is often known as action horror, where RE2 is more so survival horror, ammo management, regenerating enemies, and also the big fucker with the hat. But playing RE4 often didn't make me feel helpless or frightened. That's not true. I was frightened plenty. Ooh, spooky. Spooky scary. Oh fuck! But much like Leon's new badass personality, the gameplay made me feel just as badass. Like starting off, inventory space is no longer as much of a premium. I play the game on the middle difficulty and died fewer than maybe five times by anything that wasn't an insta-kill, so chainsaw guy excluded. But with ample inventory space, or at least enough to serve my purposes, I was never too scared of running low on ammo. Healing items weren't overly plentiful, as sometimes I went through them quite quickly, but I never had the issue of running around at nearly zero health. There are also a lot of things that RE4 does that RE2 doesn't. For example, when enemies are dead, they stay dead. The only time I remember an enemy being truly dead in RE2 was when its head exploded. But here, full death is when they drop an item, often money. You might blow their head up and then the squiggly bloodborne forbidden wood creature arrives, but once that gleam of light hits their body, they are dead. But because of that, you got a welcome stream of items to keep going. See, there's a masterful way this game was made so that you never have enough ammo to deal with a whole encounter with a single weapon, but always enough ammo with all your weapons to deal with the whole group. Then, through good scavenging and looting of bodies, the merchant, my beloved, can sell you what you need to keep going. Which makes me feel insane for what I'm about to say, but... This game plays like fucking doom. Okay, a stretch maybe, but think about it. Each encounter has a variety of enemies and weapons, and you have good ammo for certain guns, but not all. So you are constantly swapping between pistol, then shotgun, then rifle, running up and spin kicking enemies to the ground, swapping to the SMG to put a mag in something else, then gathering ammo to do it again, all in the same fight. Leon, feels like John Wick for God's sake. This system is further compounded by the gunpowder economy it presents you with. By using gunpowder, you can craft ammo for the weapons you want, but the crafting is split between resources small and large. So it allows you to make ammo for what you want, giving you a ton of freedom, but not too much freedom that you can spam only one gun. So you have this quasi-Doom-like gameplay, at least in terms of weapon swapping and ammo economy, which reflects Leon's new position as Special Forces badass. Then you have the well-made crafting and merchant system, incentivizing you to experiment with weapons and forcing you to use new stuff while not pushing you too hard down a specific path. And then, when that's all said and done, you reach the merchant, my beloved, with his just amazing dialogue. An interesting choice. Oh, I mean it in a good way, of course. Ready to sell you all kinds of new murder tools for the next encounter. And can I just say, too, that I love how the merchant is never explained. Many people I hear want some kind of spin-off thing involving the merchant, and I say that is a soiled jorts opinion. Never explain the merchant. Never explain him. That's what's so fucking fun about him. Besides his accent, dialogue, appearance, feeling of safety, and consistent, unending arsenal of weapons. The merchant is love. 
The merchant is, is safety. The merchant is the perfect friend that men love to have. I don't even need to know his name, but we'll be bros for years. Men, we know how to be friends. <laughs> Unexplained, mysteriously creepy merchant, my beloved. And if this remake didn't feel genius enough already, the parry system. Some may not enjoy the idea of your knife having a durability bar, basically acting like knife ammo. I love it. In order to employ more enemies in a proper way and have the threat still present, there need to be some middle ground between RE2 and RE3. Because in RE2, you felt almost helpless when enemies got in melee range, because health was a resource as much as your guns and ammo, plus more survival horror. In RE3, they gave you a dodge button, which was frankly far too good. Nemesis became a joke, and a ton of major enemies just didn't matter much because you could just hit dodge on everything they did. So how do you give a player a higher fighting chance while not being overpowered and still requiring some skill. Ta-da! The knife, the parry, and the durability. When enemies come close, they often grab you. Using the knife allows you to hurt them and get them off of you, but that costs durability. If an enemy tries to take a swing at you, throw something at you or anything of the like, you can just parry it with the knife, which requires precise, but not too precise timing and costs durability. The knife itself is actually, <laughs> actually a shockingly good weapon, but then again, durability. In the original, a lot of the game's controls were the reason nearby enemies were such a problem. You couldn't move and shoot, and honestly, the controls were clunky, even if they were, you know, good for the time. So with better controls and smoother combat, making this parry system gives Capcom the ability to hit you with more enemies, make the threat stronger, and still be fair. And I just, I cannot express how much I love the combat in this game. How insanely smooth it is. A smoothness I didn't think possible on the RE engine. It did give me a few problems here and there, like being stun locked by a few enemies or just some camera troubles dealing with the bugs in the last third of the game especially. But other than that, it's nearly flawless. I cannot believe it's this good and tangent it's just so video gamey. This is going to sound really stupid since it's just more of a feeling, but through my 11 hour playtime of this game, I just, I just had this feeling of a return to games of old. The ability to flip on a game and enjoy it for any stretch of time I played it at. 30 minutes or three hours, I had fun. And I think that's all in the structure. Each section has a gimmick. Like whether it's the village or the castle or the island, everything just has a little tidbit. A boating section, the catapult, the blind world leaders looking dudes, the spiked ball, the Ramon statue, the island turrets, all of it gave such a video gamey feel, like a return to the older days, which it is, but now I can understand it more. It's what makes no part of this gameplay a slog. There isn't a single part, not one, I can point out that I say I didn't enjoy going through. There are some worse than others, the catapult section comes to mind, but it's just this incredible combat wrapped up in this fun gimmick section. A section that is over rather quickly. You meet the merchant, save, and continue. Even if a spot isn't as good as another, it's over quickly enough and the gameplay is so strong that it's a constant fluctuation between 9 and 10 out of 10. Mm. There is only one section I hate, and that is with the uh, <clears throat> thick ass boys that are the regenerators. I didn't remember these from the original, and I hope I never remember it again. No, 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 no. I'm wasting too much ammo on this fucking guy, and my laser sights on my MP5, which I have no ammo for. God. <gasps> Brother in Christ. What the fuck was that? Can I never see it again? Can it never come back? A few moments later. No. Drop the bridge, Ashley. Drop the bridge. Drop the bridge, Ashley. Drop the bridge. Drop the bridge. Thanks. You're welcome. Not because the gameplay is bad, I'm just a bitch. Speaking of little bitches, Ashley. The 
this time. But what he actually is, is the biggest fucking clown of this century. So we're going to your house and we're taking away your Xbox. And we're repossessing all of your Fortnite V-Bucks and deleting your account. Is surprisingly not one. <laughs> Ashley, in my fading dreamlike memory of the original RE4, was quite horrible, not just from a gameplay point of view, but also as a character point of view. I remember her being grating on the ears, annoying, and just unpleasant to run around with. Of course, this translated into her also being terrible to deal with in terms of gameplay. <laughs> But I digress. It seems like every character has had some kind of glow up here or there in this remake. I wasn't sure if my original thoughts on Ashley were true because the Ashley of 2023 is great. Her VA is far easier to listen to. She's much more of a scared yet doing her best type of character compared to basically inept. And I also like her outfit change. She looks a bit more mature, acts a bit more mature. And for a game whose entire point is being an escort mission, this is one of the least egregious ones. You know what, I have an idea. Ashley! Oh, she thought that was a bad idea. And like I said, the other characters have upgrades too. I completely forgot Luis even existed in the original. I didn't even remember him. So him being here was already better. He's a fun way to mix up the dark and dreary nature of the game. Like a lot of the levity from RE4 comes from the dorkiness of Leon and the situations you're in, but for the most part, the game is taken rather seriously. Like the game is what makes you laugh and say, oh, Leon. But for the most part, the whole thing is treated as a serious situation. Luis has that lovely, smooth talking attitude that really gives it a lot more fun. It's also very nice to have the suspicious, overly smooth guy actually be the good guy. A guy who, well, did bad things, sure, but a good guy at the end. Plus, his scenes were just remade in such a way to make it all that much more fun when he's around. I think I might have seen a sample of the virus in a lab at the department. Do something, cop. After you. But later, saw some men dragging someone. To the old church. <laughs> ah, hanging with you, not healthy. <laughs> ah. We're not done here! Later, amigo. Also, most of the time when he's around, the gameplay gets sillier. In fact, specifically when he's around. Because this is Resident Evil, baby! If I want a totally detached, over-the-top, minecart turret section, then god fucking damn it, I'm gonna get a totally detached, over-the-top, minecart section. You know what was another character I didn't even remember? Krauser. I completely forgot he was in the game. Which, when we talk about the story a little bit later, that might make some sense. But he doesn't get as much time in this game that I think he should. I know it gets more than the original, or at least he's fleshed out. Eh, eh fleshed out. But despite that, his voice actor just kills the role. For a character that's barely in this game and doesn't contribute much at all to the story, he's got a VA with some lungs. You're too soft to do what's necessary. That's the difference between you and me, Rookie. Time for the teacher to be taught. Oh, such confidence. 
Come here, rookie! It's actually really sad he's not utilized more. I know there was a spinoff game with him, but in terms of RE4, I liked him a lot. And if only for his performance. One character I did remember, however, Salazar. I remember that little twerp plenty well. What I didn't remember was how much of a little bitch he was. <laughs> Salazar was always an insecure person and was mainly there to do tons of peacocking, but wow, I forgot how much of a child he was, especially considering he is leaps and bounds better in the new one. He looks better, he sounds better, he's actually somewhat threatening, which is only added to by the fact that he has a proper and solid boss fight. The only person that I think can be a little controversial is the new Ada. So first and foremost, all right, the old Ada, did things when we were kids. Let's be honest right now. When we were young and played RE4, we remembered Ada plenty well. I remembered quite well. Now, visually, the new Ada slaps. I like how they kept her femme fatale look intact while letting her be a bit more realistically outfitted. Capcom is doing the impossible. They found a way to make their character sexier with more clothes. Look at Cammy. But the voice is the controversial part. So much so that the VA apparently had to delete her social media after getting harassed about it. Which, like, I don't even need to say that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. Like, I want to say it. I want to tell the people who did it they're a waste of air, but they don't watch me. And even if they did, they're obviously not smart enough to, like, change their actions based on anything I say. So, I... Uh, just don't do that. Stop it. I do actually have an issue with her new voice, but I don't think it's an actress problem. We've mentioned before that voice acting issues are the fault of a few different people, either the talent, the voice director, or the script writer. Now, the talent is blameless here. I actually think her voice fits Ada really well. It's mature, has this lace of I'm not to be trusted, and when the delivery is right, it's really right. The script writers I don't blame either, because so much of this game's script hits that thin line of hilarious and serious at the same time, so they're doing their jobs fine. I blame the voice director. They're the ones who ask for more takes, get different deliveries, and overall direct the VAs. A lot of it sounds off because I think they didn't get enough proper takes or picked the wrong takes to fit with the parts. Example one, a bad take. Don't think too hard, handsome. See you later. Example two, a good take. Try using knives next time. Better for close encounters. Not a bad move. Very smooth. When she's on it, she's on it. And each line in a vacuum is fine, but it's just not placed properly. Somebody dropped the ball and I don't think it was her. So put on your big boy jorts. Stop being dicks. Ooh, while we're on controversial topics, let's talk about RE4's story. I have a question that needs to be posed. When we are discussing this game, are we rating it on its content as a whole or as a remake? Because how you determine your number rating out of 10 scale has a lot of consideration, which might sound confusing, but let's go with this. Resident Evil 4's story, plot, and villains I don't think are particularly good. You will have to take the realism paradox into account here, because we mentioned this a little bit in the Modern Warfare 2 to 2022 review, where if you criticize something for being too silly, they'll say, it's a Resident Evil game, of course it's that way. Or if they criticize something for being too realistic, they'll say, well, that's how it would be in real life, it's just realistic. You cannot hide Resident Evil behind the idea that it was bad before, so it's fine, or that bad is just cheesy. Leon's dialogue in the original is cheesy, campy, etc. But often, part of what made it memorable was that it was actually just kind of bad sometimes, or wildly unacceptable for the situation. I've been expecting you, my brethren. No thanks, bro. His dialogue in the remake is a massive improvement because it's cheesy and dorky still while being acceptable. So that's your true power? Oh, I'd ask for a refund. Dialogue can be realistic and funny at the same time. This sucks! So at what point does it's a Resident Evil game 
stop working for the flaws in this game. Because I think the story and villains aren't very good. I think a lot of the side characters don't get much screen time, so I don't care about their deaths, despite it being way better than the original. Luis, for example, gets a boatload more screen time here. He's fleshed out quite a bit more, and yet I still think he's underdeveloped. Krauser gets way better fights, a stellar VA, and more development, and he still feels like a random side mission. Lord Sadler has that problem that Resident Evil always seems to have, where they just don't do a good job at setting up the final villain. Mother Miranda in 8 and that young girl what's her name in 7 had the same issues. See, these problems were much more glaring in the original, and almost all of them have been improved. But improvement doesn't tip the scale into good slash great. I think Ramon Salazar was really the standout, especially with his way better boss fight. Other than him, most characters feel like they're playing backseat to the Leon show, which I suppose happened in RE2 as well, but there were fewer characters to worry about. When I thought on my fading dream memories of RE4, the things that I did remember the most were the gameplay set pieces, the opening village being the big standard, but things like the Salazar robot, the water room, all of that. I didn't think about the characters at all, and as I mentioned, forgot some even existed. So if I'm to look at RE4 from a completely critical view, laying it on the table as how I feel, even with the remake, the characters fall a bit flat sometimes. Time. Sadler is underdeveloped, Krauser is a side story, and even Luis didn't get enough time to shine. And don't get me wrong, they're all way better than their original counterparts, but it didn't do enough to shove them into the good category, with exception on Salazar, but that was mainly due to the boss fight. Speaking of boss fights, this might be the first ever Resident Evil where I actually wanted to do one. Resident Evil boss fights have always felt kind of trash to me. I didn't like the ones in 7, 8, 2, or three, but these were serious improvements. I think the better movement system, better weapon variety, and flat out better arenas made a huge improvement, not to mention, of course, the parry system. And oh, they're getting a lot out of the parry system in the redone Krauser fight. Honestly, I feel like they took a page out of the Rafe fight in Uncharted 4. The way he does the multiple combos and everything, it felt really similar. But no, these boss fights are lovely. They aren't stellar in terms of overall gameplay, but enough spectacle and dialogue can really make it. Plus, I had picked up the newest super weapon on the block, the Blacktail, my beloved, which I had fully upgraded and done the exclusive upgrade for, giving it the same damage as my Stingray Rifle. Wifle. From then on, I was a menace. So for once, I really liked the boss fights. They were a huge improvement. RE gameplay will always make it a little clunky, but but damn, that Salazar fight? Damn, that music too? Damn! The only fight I didn't do was the double ogre one. I had a friend help me. All right. <laughs> Easy game. God damn, I'm good at video games. So. At the end of the day, I have a few questions on how we rate this game. It's a great game. With all of its flaws, it's still a great game. It's also a return to video gamey video games, where the main selling point of the game is the game. The gameplay, more specifically. I love games like God of War and Uncharted, but a lot of the time, those games like to put a lot of marketing eggs in the characters, the story, the graphics, and all these things I do love and appreciate, but this one put all of its eggs in the gameplay. The act of playing it, the pacing, the structure, the fun gimmicks, the upgrades, the merchant, the ammo economy, a return to the video gamey video game. But again, that question, do we rate this as a game? 
or as a remake. See, I often ask people, what is your objective and subjective favorite? Let's take the Miyazaki films, yeah? My objective favorite is Princess Mononoke. I think it is the strongest as a film in all aspects of like being a movie. My subjective favorite, my personal favorite, is Porco Rosso. The movie connects with me on a whole other level and I just like it more. I think RE2 might be my objective favorite. I think it has a tighter storyline. Leon has a great progression from single cop to certified badass. The game also progresses with him as he gets more badass. The insanity of the game ramps up. Police station to underground lab. Birkin is also set up as the main villain a lot better. You get multiple fights against him and his story progresses in a smooth way. And of course, the Mr. X fight is just the most sad satisfying thing. Finally getting to kill the guy who was hounding you the whole time. So in my subjectively objective opinion, Jesus, I'm a prick. I think RE2 is the stronger no, game. No, a few of us. <laughs> but I play the RE4 remake 10 times more than the RE2 remake because god damn, this gameplay is so fucking good and the merchant is so good. The replayability, the new game plus, the weapons, the upgrades, the gimmicks, the enemies, good golly gosh, it's such a treat to play. And as remakes go, it's the superior one. As a video game, a video gamey, video gamey, gamey, gamey game. RE4 is fantastic. Even with all its flaws left over from the original, it slaps. It's a great time through and through. But as a remake, it's a goddamn masterpiece. As a remake, it has dethroned RE2 in my mind as the best remake ever made. As an overall product, nine out of 10, give or take. I don't know quite exactly. As a remake, 11 out of 10, ridiculous. I wondered if I would ever get sick of Capcom just releasing the old games as remakes and making hand over fist amounts of money, but it's too damn good to be mad about. If every remake was like this, every movie refresh, every game update, we wouldn't even be complaining. And to Ashley asking for overtime, I say, no thanks, bro. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope I made myself mostly clear without coming off as a extremely snobby asshole. I have a hard time making the words out of the mouth good. Why why use big word when small word do trick? Uh, check out War Thunder. They're very kind for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate them. And so down there in the description. And if you'd like to support me in other ways, you can buy some merch. Uh, this is the Ukrainian pride tea. We give away percentage of the profits to Ukraine to help with the war efforts. And also we have sweatpants that you can, this is the Adeptus Ridiculous one here, but uh, you can buy sweatpants now in the store and they are so comfortable. I love them. I'm biased, but like, you know, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, you all have a great one. Uh, love you, bye. Come on, obviously you're a skater.